Do you ever have to read a page in a book three times because you forgot what you were reading? Have you ever been stuck with writer's block? Can't come up with any creative ideas? Well of inspiration running dry? Pick up a book. Dive into a literary adventure that transcends time and enriches your soul. In today's episode, we explore the profound value of reading great authors, drawing inspiration from the timeless wisdom encapsulated in their words. Tune in and embark on a literary expedition that promises to elevate your reading experience and deepen your appreciation for the profound impact of great authors. Get ready to unlock the treasures that lie within the written word. That's all coming up next, right here on Stop Doubting Your Dream. Stay tuned. Do you have a deep-rooted dream you long to pursue but are feeling held back by self-doubt, the possibility of failure, and the relentless demands of everyday life? Welcome to Stop Doubting Your Dream. I'm your host, Jeff Meyer, and each week I'll give you practical steps to turn your dream into a viable source of income so you can live without regret reshape your future, and create the meaningful change you want to see in the world, all without leaving your day job. So if you're someone who's ready to stop doubting your dream and start living it, let's dive in. Welcome back. This is episode number 81. Reading is life. Reading is creativity. Reading is inspiration. Reading is life. Life is a grand narrative. And within the pages of books, we discover the tales that resonate with our own. Each word, each sentence is a heartbeat. And as we flip through the chapters, we navigate the highs and lows, the twists and turns, mirroring the rhythms of our own lives. Reading is an odyssey, a chance to live myriad lives, experience countless adventures, and find echoes of our own stories in the tales of others. Reading is creativity. Creativity is the heartbeat of human expression, isn't it? You are an original masterpiece created to be a co-creator with your creator. Within the vast realm of literature, we encounter the boundless landscapes of the imagination. Reading sparks creativity by transporting us to realms unknown, challenging our perceptions and kindling the fires of innovation. It's a canvas where words paint vivid pictures inviting us to dream, to imagine, and to create in ways that elevate our thinking and expand the horizons of what's possible. Reading is inspiration. In the pages of books, we discover not just characters and plots, but also the profound power of ideas. Each sentence is a spark, and every chapter holds the potential to ignite the flames of inspiration. Reading inspires us to think, question, and a dream beyond the confines of our reality. It's a wellspring of motivation that empowers us to embrace challenges, pursue our passions, and embark on journeys of self-discovery. So, dear listeners, this episode is not just about words on paper. It's about the life, creativity, and the inspiration that pulsate within each paragraph of what we choose to read. So buckle up. As we transition from the celebration of reading's grandeur to the intimate spaces of my own bookshelf, each highlighted dog-eared page and worn-out spine is a testament to the impact these books that I'm going to share with you in this episode have had on my life, my creativity, and my aspirations. My own reading story is a story of stops and starts, if I had to describe it, of seasons I would describe as voracious devouring of many books to periods of restless striving without any literary companions. One thing I've discovered is that during those periods of dryness, of overwhelm, lack of productivity, lack of creativity, and lack of motivation, I wasn't reading. The other thing I would note is that when I made reading a habit, for example, when I made it a part of my morning routine or my evening ritual, I was inspired to try new things. I experienced more joy. I shared ideas that were emerging from the pages with my dear wife, Amy. I slept better. I got after my day better. Working on this podcast has inspired me again to add the reading discipline to my daily habits because I've been in a dry space 
for some time. I'm going to turn ESPN off a little earlier each evening, turn off my electronics, and read for 30 minutes before I put my head on my pillow. It's worked for me before. Thanks to this episode and this resolve and this commitment, I'm looking forward to it. So without further ado, here are 10 reasons I read. And just for fun, a book I've read that I treasure that illustrates each point. Okay? Reason number one, reading broadens our perspectives. Great authors can help readers to broaden their viewpoints, fostering a deeper understanding of diverse ideas and worldviews. The book is an example of broadening perspectives is one um, called The Color of Compromise. The subtitle is The Truth About the American Church's Complicity in Racism by Jamar Tisby. Man, this book rocked my world. The Color of Compromise really helped me understand the history of the church from the perspective of my black brothers and sisters. My perspective was tainted by my white experience and what I was allowed to learn in my educational history. Add to this, I was in a group conversation with other leaders here in Madison, humbling and motivating. Reason number two, I read, reading cultivates empathy. Literature enables us to deepen our appreciation for the complexities of the human condition. This helps us stay curious about another's experience. It gives us the gift of appreciation for other people, and it keeps us from being insular and arrogant. My example of cultivating empathy is a off-quoted book by me, Sit, Walk, Stand is the title by Watchman Nee. The best summary of the book of Ephesians that I've ever read, and therefore the best summary of the Jesus way that you hear me talk a lot about in this podcast, from a man who gave his life in China, executed for his love of Jesus, this book breathes life into me every time I recommend it and every time I read it. Reason number three, reading enhances critical thinking. Great authors stimulate us to analyze, evaluate, synthesize, and apply information for transformation. One I've read recently that would fit in this category is Profit First. Transform Your Business from a Cash-Eating Monster to a Money-Making Machine by Mike Michalowicz. Since I launched my coaching business, I have spent so much money in an attempt to grow my business. And just like the subtitle says, it has been a cash-eating monster. This book has reminded me to pay myself first and not just reminded me, but given me tools to do it. Reason number four, reading expands our vocabulary. Exposure to well-crafted prose and poetry enhances language skills and refines our communication capacity. One example of this for me is a book called Everyday Prayers by Scotty Smith. And the subtitle is 365 Days to a Gospel-Centered Faith. These prayers, all written out, one for each day, have tuned my heart to conversation with God. I can pray with raw emotion, honest and full expression. Nothing is hidden from God. It has helped me speak to God in my own language when I thought I had nothing to say. Number five, reading deepens understanding of human history. Literature can serve as a window into different cultures, different historical periods, and societal contexts. Great authors capture the essence of their times and translate it for us to grasp, to understand, and to see the impact on our own modern day lives. An example of this is a book called The Viking Heart. It's a, it's a big volume. Now, the subtitle is How Scandinavians Conquered the World by Arthur Herman. A gift from a friend in preparation for a trip to Norway that hasn't happened yet, by the way. I had no idea the influence that my forefathers had on the entire world. Absolutely amazing. The scattered Scandinavian influence is everywhere. Their passionate search for freedom, their love for community, their fearlessness in the face of harsh and unforgiving environments are still alive today in me for example, and in so many others. It reminds me that history is not merely a study of the past, but a deep dive to help me and help others understand the present. Number six, reading inspires creativity. 
Reading works by great authors can ignite the creative spark in us, whether we are aspiring writers or individuals seeking fresh perspectives in our fields. An example of this would be The Artist's Way, Every Day, A Year of Creative Living by Julia Cameron. This workbook was a true companion to me during my six-month sabbatical from the local church. With its writing prompts, it helped me journal consistently. It helped me discover and uncover deep truths about myself, the narratives that I was speaking, and it gave me permission to celebrate and to be gracious to myself. Reason number seven for reading. Reading helps in navigating complexity. Life is so complex, and it's filled with so much ambiguity. Great authors offer us guidance in navigating the intricacies of life. Seth Godin's book, The Dip, a little book that teaches you when to quit, is an example that I would use in this category. So many times in the entrepreneurial journey, I have wondered if it was time to quit. This little book is gold, such a simple formula to help me decide whether to quit or keep going. And I'm still going. So there's that. Reason number eight, reading shapes and articulates personal values. Books can help us reflect on our own values, beliefs, and sharpen them. An example of this for me would be uh, Paul Sparks' book, The New Parish, How Neighborhood Churches Are Transforming Mission, Discipleship, and Community. This book has given words and principles to my missional heart and leadership. It has sparked the creation of a new venture called Neighboring Life. You can check it out at neighboringlife.com if you're interested. And it's shaped our church's vision that we call household wells. Number nine, reading can help us escape and relax. Great authors transport readers to different worlds. Offering a form of relaxation and a temporary respite from the stresses of reality, just like you, sometimes I just need to escape. A book written by uh, Hall of Famer guard Jerry Kramer for the Green Bay Packers in the 60s um, called Instant Replay, The Green Bay Diary of Jerry Kramer. What can I say? Even though I'm a Viking, I love the Green Bay Packers. Go Pack, go! Reason number 10, reading connects us across time. Reading works from great authors creates a bridge from here to there, fostering a sense of continuity and shared human experiences. I love James D. Bradley's book, Flyboys, a true story of courage. The courage and determination, the selflessness and sense of duty that my grandfather and so many other men and women displayed at this time, World War II, in human history, against all odds, is so inspiring. As we think about reading, I'd like to put on my guide hat for a moment. I think there's a lot to learn as we look and consider the way of Jesus. Seven applications I could come up with as I think about reading and following Jesus. Number one, as we follow Jesus, we learn from those who have gone before. The New Testament book of Hebrews chapter 12 invites us to consider the great cloud of witnesses. We get to learn from those who have gone before us. The great cloud of witnesses includes not only biblical figures, but also literary giants and great authors. Reading their works allow us to benefit from the wisdom, experiences, and perspectives they share. Another application is I consider the way of Jesus. Adopt a deliberate and thoughtful approach to your reading. There's a methodology of reading the Bible that I teach and that we teach, which is modeled by Jesus at our church. It's called Read, Reflect, Respond, Remember. Just as Jesus engaged individuals with intentionality, readers can derive more value from great authors by actively reading, reflecting on the content, responding to the insights gained, and committing key takeaways to memory. A third application, understand the context. As I look at a particular story in the book of Acts, the history book of the New Testament, chapter 8, there's a story about Philip and the Ethiopian treasurer. The Spirit leads Philip along the road to talk to this Ethiopian who's making his way down the road. And Philip goes up alongside the chariot and asks the Ethiopian this question. Do you understand what you're reading? 
of that question. This question underscores the importance of comprehending the cultural, historical, and literary context of a text. The way of Jesus also teaches us to engage in dialogue, continuing with that same story. We not only understand the context, but Philip, through the prompting of the Holy Spirit, engages with this foreigner on his way. After he asks that important question, do you understand what you're reading? He's invited up into the chariot with him. So reading for us can also involve not only internal reflection, but also discussing and sharing insights with others, fostering a community of learning. Read with others. Community is formed. Maybe a book club or in your small group, we can engage in dialogue. As we read, the next application here is to apply to daily life and act on it. Jesus frequently applied spiritual truths to everyday situations. So bridge the gap between the insights gained from great authors and your own lives. Ask yourself, how can the lessons learned here in what I'm reading be applied to my own personal growth? to my own relationships and my own decision-making. Another view from the way of Jesus in terms of reading is transformation and discipleship. The way of Jesus is first and foremost transformative. We are changed. We become more like Jesus. When we read, we seek not only knowledge, but also transformation in our character and in our worldview through the wisdom imparted by great authors. And finally, the way of Jesus, as we talk about reading and reading great authors, Jesus teach us, teaches us that it builds curiosity and exploration. Explore a diverse range of authors and genres. What might I learn? What perspective might I get? A deeper appreciation for seven quick applications, considering the way of Jesus as we think about reading great authors. Thanks so much for joining me today for another episode of Stop Doubting Your Dream. Can I invite you to let this episode inspire you to do what I did here? What great works have you read that have contributed in these 10 ways to your journey? It's been an interesting exercise for me. I think it would be for you too. And I'd love to hear what you learn, what you discover as you go through it. I'd also like to invite you to explore my social media and my blog at my website, jeffmeyercoaching.com, for more tips and insights on reading and on building your own library. And I'd like to remind you that next week, we're going to examine why being crystal clear on your dream matters. And here's a hint, your dream is your power. Remember, the journey towards your dream begins today. Take action with a single step.